Okay, before talking about um, ICA, we have to understand what statistical independence actually means. So ICA is a linear algorithm that takes a mixture of signals and tries to find a linear transformation that unmixes these signals and makes them statistically independent. So what does statistical independence mean? So from Bayesian theory, we know that this is one way to formulate what statistical independence means. S1 is one variable, S2 is another variable. Up a little bit. Um, P of S is a joint probability distribution of these two variables. S1 is a scalar, S2 is also a scalar, but we have a lot of points. Each point here is a combination of S1 and S2 and can be plotted in such a graph. PS1 is a marginal distribution of S1, and that's shown here on the, on the left side for, for, for this example. Mm. In this case, it's sort of a somewhat a double Laplacian, a double um, exponential or Laplacian distribution, while P of S2 is the distribution of the second variable that goes along this line here. And that's a flat distribution in this case. Now, if you combine these two, you have a distribution uh, that is sort of flat in the vertical and peaky in the horizontal. And that gives a distribution like this. Okay, so I want to illustrate that a little bit more. And for that I want to use the following type of plot. So we have S1 here, we have S2 here, and I plot the marginal distribution of these two variables here at the upper and lower side. So for instance, I can assume I have a flat distribution. Right, so this is uh, P of S1. And this here is P of S2. It's the probability density of S1 along the dimension of S1 here, and this is the probability density of S2 along the dimension of S2. Um, and let's assume both uniformly distributed. Then the resulting distribution, you take the product of these, like this. So point. Uniform, uniform square distribution, that's the joint probability distribution, P of S1, S2, maybe I write this here as well. So this is P of S1, S2. It's a 
square distribution and the marginals are these two. So here everything is fine and obviously S1 and S2 are statistically independent of each other. Now let's consider another example. Same kind of plot. Now we have we have again a square distribution, but the square is rotated forty five degrees. So then if you look at the marginal distribution, so okay, so this is as I said. This is P of S1, 2. And now from that, by projecting all the data on the one axis or on the other axis, we can figure out the marginal distribution. It's quite obvious that at this S2 um, value, so this is S2 again, this is S1. So at this S2 value, we have a lot of points. At this S2 value, we have only few points. And here, we have no points. So the marginal distribution looks like a triangle. Looks like this. Same applies to S1. So also here we have a triangle. P of S2. P of S2. Now if you want to calculate the product of the marginals, we have to multiply, sorry, black, but I want to switch to green now. Oh, let me pink here. Um, I want to calculate the product of the marginals. So I, that's again something that lives in this space. <coughs> it's quite obvious that the largest value is here. In the center, because P2 and P1 have the largest value there. Now, as you move along S1 or S2, the probability distribution decreases. But at this corner here, at this corner, there may still be points, because there's some probability for S2 as well as S1. So the points of the product of these two, so if we would draw S1 and S2 not from this joint distribution, but from P of S1 and, and P of S2 individually, and then put these numbers together, we actually um, we get actually, well, sorry, that didn't work out so well here. We actually get a distribution that lives in this in this square, but there are only few points here, and there are many more points in the center. Yeah. Uh, since now, no matter where you cut through this, yeah, if you cut through here, for instance, yeah, then the profile will look now of the pink distribution, right? The profile will look like this, but with a relatively small amplitude. If you cut through here, it will look again like this, but with a large amplitude. The consequence of that is that we have wedges here from this P of S2 distribution and here from this P of S1 distribution. So um, it looks a little, little bit like a pyramid, but except that the wedges are along the uh, sort of the midlines rather than diagonals. So it's a bit strange. So now it's it's a nice exercise to think about. Okay, what happens as you so how does the density develop as you go along this diagonal here, right? Now what you do there, you multiply this linear function with this linear function. So you multiply two linear 
identical linear functions, that means along this line uh, here, it actually grows quadratically. Yeah? So there's a straight line along these wedges, right, and quadratic increase in this direction. Okay, so what we see here is that the product of the marginals, and that is this thing, P of S1 times P of S2. So this thing differs from the original joint distribution, so therefore S1 and S2 are not statistically independent. While on the left side, um, the product of these two flat distributions actually equals the original joint distribution. So here they are statistically independent, here they are not. And interestingly, if you rotate this by 45 degrees, you actually end up with this distribution, um, or with such a distribution, a square distribution, and the components are statistically independent. That's what ICA does. right? So it turns such a distribution into such a distribution, because otherwise they are identical. Now one more comment here. <clears throat> it's worth mentioning that if you take two Gaussians <clears throat> so let's assume you get circular Gaussian side and this is circular symmetric, so you can, ro no matter how you rotate it, you always get a product of two Gaussians. Right? And that's the only distribution that, that gives you that. Um, so, and that's the reason why in ICA, so ICA can't do anything for you if you have two Gaussian distributions. If you had a Gaussian distribution, oops, sorry. If you have a Gaussian distribution, and a flat distribution, then of course, in this direction, so that would mean we have draw this now. We have pretty much something like this. It's limited top and bottom by this uniform distribution and we have a high concentration uh, here percent to sigma lines and now we have a lot of points inside here of course this is a gradual of the density of points and now if you would rotate this of course that would be a different distribution Good. So hopefully it's clear now what statistical independence means. Well, maybe I should mention there's also another way to look at this. So far, we have looked at this from this equation. So we we'll say two variables are statistically independent if the joint distribution is equals the product of the marginals. There's another way of, of um, to say that, and that would be. Um, V 
we also know from basic theory that if two variables are statistically independent, this equation holds. So p of s1 given s2 equals p of s1. And sort of the intuitive interpretation of this is that knowing s2 does not tell us anything about s1. So how can we visualize that? and so now okay so let's go maybe we the first example we again take the square distribution now knowing one variable means For example, we know that S2 has this value. That means we have to look in this distribution along this line. And if we do this, we see that we have a flat distribution between the lower value here and the upper value there. If S2 has a different value, Uh, we do the same and we get the same distribution, right? Again, it's a flat distribution. If we have a distribution like... So if you have the rotated square as above, enough maybe two and we know the value of is two we know it has this value through here and we see that the distribution This now is P of S1 given S2 for the green value. Now if I take another value, Now, if we know S2 has this value, then we need to cut through this in order to get the conditional um, probability distribution. And that then gives us, well, actually, I should draw this much smaller, right? A normalization condition. A bit out of scale, I'm sorry. Draw this completely. But okay, so this would be. This would be P of S1 given S2 for another value S2. So we see that the distribution of S1 given S2 actually depends on the value of S2. So this would be a distribution where we see um, the two variables are not statistically independent, while here we have of this distribution in either case. So now all these distributions should be normalized to one. I've sort of drawn these relative to each other somewhat alright. I mean this is of course 
as a different scaling factor than this. Okay, so we see there are two different ways to visualize and to think about statistical independence that I've presented here. There are more than this. This can also argue with mutual information. I'm not going to do this here. Uh, so either you say um, the distribution of the one given the other does not depend on the value of the other. That would be this version. Or we go for this interpretation that the joint probability distribution equals the product of the marginal distribution.